Hello everyone. Namaste. My name is Reverend Father Joseph Lagumbay from the Catholic Universalist Church and welcome to the Corporate Mystic. Now today, I will discuss with you the four things that I strongly disagree with mainstream Christianity. But before that, intro. So, 30% of the world's population are Christians. However, itong 30% na ito, these are divided into different Christian denominations. Now, regardless of these differences in uh, denominations, based on my years of study and research, there are four things that I strongly disagree with mainstream Christianity in general. Now, just a disclaimer, this video does not reflect the views and opinions of my church or my mentors. These are purely my educated opinion based on my years of study and research on this topic. So let's start. First of all, um, the, the very first reason that I really disagree with mainstream Christianity is this. We are the chosen people of God. Diba? That statement kasi is very elitist and you know it speaks that if you are a Christian, then you are closer to God and those non-Christians are not favored by God because they are not close to God. And if you're not a Christian, you are in the wrong religion, so you will be doomed forever in eternity or, or in hell. Tama? So, for me, as a liberal and progressive Christian, I don't agree with this statement because kung meron man chosen people of God, tayo yon lahat. Because remember that our religion is heavily based on culture. It is based on our own understanding. Kasi diba, there are people who are on, on, on this place. And in this place, uh, it could be that, you know, Christianity has not reached uh, this place as of yet. So, paano nila makikilala si Jesus? Paano nila malalaman ng Christianity if there were no Christian missionaries that reach this place? But would that mean that these people are not loved by quote-unquote God? No, it's because God is unfathomable, diba? Let's say Christianity is just one of, you know, a thousand paths, a thousand religions. And if you follow Christianity, that's good. You follow it, you honor it. However, you also need to honor and respect other religious traditions or other paths because they are equally valid as your path. So Christianity is not the only right religion. Our religion is based on our culture and also based on our understanding. Because there are people who are much more comfortable with these kind of teachings, much more comfortable with this, you know, kind of setup, di ba? Tulad ng uh, mga matatanda, mas gusto nilang nandun sa Catholic Church kasi they are used to that form of worship. While yung mga mas bata, mas gusto nila dun sa born-again churches kasi di ba, maraming music. So, you know, we really can't judge other people kung ano yung path na pipiliin nila. Second is this, the Bible is the Word of God. Now, let me break this to you. The Bible is not the Word of God. You need to understand and you need to remember this. The Bible is not one book. Rather, the Bible is a collection of books written by different people on different periods of time for different purposes. Though the Bible may not be the Word of God, but the Bible are written by people who are seeking God. But you need to understand that these different people who wrote these different books in the Bible lived in different times and they have different geopolitical climate on that certain period of time. So basically, their writings are based or is heavily influenced by the current state of their consciousness based on the current state of their nation of their country and also there are even books in the bible that contradicts with each other you need to also understand and you need to know that the bible was compiled 300 years after the death of our lord and master jesus so ibig sabihin the bible was not compiled during the time of jesus and also not all scriptures 
will was written during the time of Jesus. Some scriptures were written after the time of Jesus. Doon napapasok ang pseudopigrapha. Doon napapasok yung ating uh, biblical scholarship kung saan ang authentic at saan ang hindi authentic. And eto pa, the translations also matter because the original language of our Lord and Master Jesus is Hebrew and Aramaic. So from Jerusalem, the teachings were carried by Paul the Apostle to the Gentiles, to the Greeks, to the Romans. So, nagkakaroon na ngayon ng ibang translations. Nagkakaroon na ng uh, ibang meaning ng mga words. Kasi language is heavily based on culture. So, there are practices in Jerusalem that is not present in the Greeks or in the Romans and vice versa. So, there is already a discrepancy in the translation. And from there, it was translated to Latin and was translated further into English. So, kailangan natin intindihin na there are so many factors that we need to understand or we need to know before we say that we have the right uh, the right interpretation of the scriptures. All right? So, you can't just pick any verse and use it against your enemy or you can't just pick any verse and use it against your fellow man, di ba? Doon nagkakaroon ng hidwaan kasi we are relying on our own interpretation of the Bible where in fact, it needs to have a thorough study. It needs to have a thorough biblical scholarship before we can assume that the meaning of this is this. Okay? So, it should be context over content. Though the Bible is not the word of God, however, we can get a lot of wisdom from the Bible if we just know how to read it, if we just know the proper way of how to interpret the things in there. The third thing that I disagree with mainstream Christianity is this, free will and sin is more powerful than God. Diba? Palaging sinasabi ng mga Christians know that God wants you to be saved. Diba? However, if you choose to sin, if you choose to live an evil life, you will be tortured for eternity in hell. Diba? Isipin mo to. If you have lived for 70 years, you're very evil, and then you die. So your soul will go to hell, to this eternal torture chamber, diba? However, you just live for 70 years, but why are you going to be tortured forever? Diba? If God is the God of love, if God is the God of justice, why will He put you in eternity and torture there just because you have sinned for 70 years, isn't that absurd, diba? What if I'll give you a punishment good for 70 years, good for 700 years, 7,000 years? Why forever? Why eternal punishment, diba? So, that only means that God is either malevolent, He is not benevolent, or God is benevolent, however, God is weak. God is not omnipotent, but God is impotent. Because God wants you to be saved, but because of your free will and because of your sin, He cannot save you. Diba? God created you. How is it that He can't save you? Diba? So, you know, that's just very absurd. For us liberal and progressive Christians, no? God's love is infinite. God is benevolent, and God is omnipotent. Meaning to say that even though how sinful you are, God can still save you. So, for us liberal and progressive Christians, we do not believe in an eternal hell. But we believe in the constant transmigration of the soul, or we call that in Buddhism, reincarnation. So, God's love is this burning fire. So, this burning fire purifies us until we become pure, until we become one with God. So, God doesn't torture us forever. God just purifies us until we become pure, and when our souls become pure, we go to Him. We go to heaven. Now lastly, this is the thing that I disagree with mainstream Christianity. Jesus is the only Son of God. Well, that's not true because we are all sons and daughters of God. We need to understand that the Messiah that they are talking about is not just Jesus, though Jesus was the first to exhibit these characteristics of the Messiah, the Bar Inash, or the, the Son of Man, Messiah, 
we are all going to transform according to the scriptures we are all going to transform in the image and likeness of Christ Jesus kasi was called the son of God but actually Jesus being called the son of God it only appeared in the book of John which is different from the three synoptic gospels which is Matthew Mark and Luke in Matthew Mark and Luke Jesus was actually called the son of man now what is the son of man the son of man was the Messiah that the prophet Isaiah was talking about in the Old Testament man refers to the perfect man or the first man that was created by God, which is Adam. And remember that Adam was created in the image and likeness of God. So meaning to say, Adam is the perfect image of humanity. So if Jesus is the son of man, Jesus is the son of Adam. Kasi diba, in the Christian mythology, uh, Adam fell from grace. You know, nagkasala si Adam. But the son of Adam is the perfect man, not Adam, because the perfect man will redeem Adam. So, in this context, Jesus was called the Son of Man or the Bar Inash. That means he is the future of humanity. Now, bakit naging Messiah ben David si Jesus? Diba? They say that, you know, Jesus is the Messiah ben David, the Messiah is the Son of David. But if you really look in the, to the Bible, no, Jesus rebuked this idea. He is not the son of David. He is not the, the warrior Messiah that they are waiting for. In the book of the prophet Isaiah, kasi in the Old Testament, my three parts yan. We have the Proto-Isaiah, we have the Jotero-Isaiah, and the Trito-Isaiah. Now, in the initial parts of the book of Isaiah, it speaks there about um, the the day of the Lord, no? wherein, you know, um, the Messiah is, uh, is, is, is a transformative image, is a transformative figure of the entire human race. However, according to biblical scholarship, only the first part of the book Isaiah was written by the prophet himself. The Jotero Isaiah and the Trito Isaiah was actually written by his followers years after his ascension. And during this time, this was the time that they were uh, captive, they were held captive by the Babylonians. So, diba, as I mentioned earlier, the writers of the Bible based their writings on their current geopolitical climate. They base it on their current uh, situation, current mindset as well, and current theological standpoint. So meaning to say, on the later parts of the book of Isaiah, it appeared na ang book of Isaiah is speaking of a Messiah that's a warrior that will save them from being captive. Because during that time, the the later parts of the book of Isaiah was written during those times of captivity. So, meaning to say, the Messiah that they were waiting for is not a warrior Messiah, but rather a transformative image. And that is the image of Christ. That is the image of Jesus. That's why um, the Apostle Paul said no, that we need to become Christ-like. Our journey as Christians is to transform, to become Christ-like, to become the image of the new humanity, to become the image of the new Adam. So saying that Jesus is the only Son of God and we need to cling unto Him so that we go to heaven is just false. We need to imitate Jesus. We need to follow Jesus so that we become like Him and we transform according to His image and we become sons and daughters of God. All right? So guys, I hope that you've learned something new today and I hope that you don't take this video as a hate speech against Christianity. No, these are just my opinion and these are the things that I disagree with Christianity. It's just like saying, I like your house, but I don't like this specific room. I'm not saying that I totally don't like your house. Parang ganon, no? So yes, guys, um, if you have any comment or you know, if you have suggestions, um, if, if you want to say something about this topic, please uh, put it down in the comments below and let me know your thoughts, okay? So guys, if this is your first time watching my video, please click like, hit subscribe, and also ring the notification bell so that next time when I upload videos like this, you will be one of the first few people who will be able to see it, alright? So I hope you've learned something new today and God bless everyone. Namaste.